Professor, scholar in journalism at the Usmania University, and I have I, we and our friends run a site called SakshiTimes.com. I have questions to you. One, I always knew that Quran is incomplete without Hadith. Now you are referring to other scriptures also. Since you have referred to Bible, Bible says anybody who denies Jesus Christ is the spirit of Antichrist. That is a prophecy. And I also know that Hadith says that Muhammad had diabolical inspiration. What should I conclude from this? He was asked a question in which he has mentioned a few sentences. He said that he knows that the Quran is incomplete without the Hadith. And now he has heard other scriptures also. That means if I quote the Bible, that means we have to follow the Bible. And he says, the Bible says, anyone who does not believe and deny Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, will go to hell, etc., etc. So what are my comments? Point number one, the Quran is not incomplete without the Hadith. The Quran is complete by itself. But to understand the Quran, you have to go to the commentary of the Quran. The commentary of the Quran is the Hadith that is the authentic saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Quran by itself is a complete book. Alhamdulillah by itself. But if you want commentary in more details about it, then you refer to the sayings, the authentic sayings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which we call as Sayyid Hadith. Not just because I quoted the other scriptures. That does not mean I agree that all the other scriptures are the word of God. Please don't misunderstand me. I was using the strategy of the Quran. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 64, Come to common terms as between us and you. We are coming to common terms. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Rath, chapter number 13, verse number 38, And in every age have we sent a revelation. Allah has sent several revelations, several books. By name, only four are mentioned in the Quran. The Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, and the Quran. The Torah is the Wahi, the revelation which was given to Moses, peace be upon him. The Zabur is the Wahi, the revelation which was given to David, peace be upon him. The Injil is the Wahi, the revelation which was given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And Quran is the last and final revelation which was given to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, since all the previous revelations came only for a particular group of people and they were meant to be followed in totality for a particular time period, Almighty God did not think it fit to preserve it in pristine purity. But because Quran was the last and final revelation, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 9, we have revealed the Quran and we shall guard it from corruption. So Quran is the only religious book on the face of the earth, which is in its pure form. I'm not saying that. Even the scholars of comparative religion, including William Moore, who's one of the staunchest critics of Islam, being a Christian, he said 200 years earlier that there is no religious book. There is no religious book which has maintained its pure form for more than 1,200 years. Now it is more than 1,400 years, like the Quran. Being a Christian, being a staunchest critic of Islam, he has to be truthful that Quran is pure form. Now all the other religious scriptures have changed its form, including the Bible. I don't consider the Bible to be the word of God. We Muslims believe in the Wahi which was given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, the Injil. But the present Bible that we have, brother, this Bible, it's a mixture. It may contain words of God which match with the Quran. I have got no problem in accepting it with the word of God. It also contains the words of the prophets. It contains the word of historians. I'm sorry to say it even contains pornography. I can't quote it here. I can't. It even contains hundreds of contradictions, scientific errors, mathematical errors, which I can't repeat here. But I had a dialogue with Dr. William Campbell. He wrote a book against Islam, the Quran and the Bible in the light of history and science. And he said, the Quran has got 30 scientific errors. I went to USA. He's from Philadelphia, and we had a debate in the year 2000, 1st April, on the topic, the Quran and the Bible in light of science. And I answered to all his allegations. And when I pointed out 38 contradictions in the Bible, he could not reply to them.
Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 79 Allah says فَوَيْلُلْ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِيَيْدِهِمْ سُمَّا يَقُلُونَ هَذَا مِنِ اندِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ سَمْنًا قَلِيلًا فَوَيْلُلْ لَهُمْ مِمَّا قَتَبَتْ اَيْدِهِمْ فَوَيْلُلْ لَهُمْ مِمَّا يَخْسِبُونَ Woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say this is from Allah to traffic with it for a miserable price Woe to those of what they write Woe to those of what they earn So today's Bible if you know the word Bible is not there in the Bible it comes from the Greek word biblos, meaning a book of books. And the scholars say there are many authors of the Bible, not I, the Christian scholars. So the present Bible, I don't consider it to be the word of God. Similarly, if you ask me, can you consider the Veda to be the word of God? Can you consider the Buddhist script to be the word of God? Can you consider the Parsi script word of God? That's what I say. Maybe they were, maybe they were not. Since there were many scriptures sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many books by name for mentioned. But there were many other like Sufi, Ibrahim, several others. So what I say, maybe Hindu scriptures, maybe word of God. Maybe Buddhist scriptures, maybe word of God. Maybe Parsi scriptures were the word of God. But even if they were, they were meant for those people and for that time. Today, you have to follow the last and final revelation, that is the glorious Quran. So any human being, whether living in India, in America, in Canada, in UK, in Singapore, in Saudi Arabia, all the human beings in the world should follow the last and final revelation, the glorious Quran, and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I am not saying Hindu scripture is the word of God. Even if it was, it was meant for those people and for that time. The Hindu scholars agree that the scriptures have been changed. The Buddhist scholars agree that Buddhist scriptures have been changed. All the scholars of their own religion except Islam, they agree that the scriptures have gone changes down the line, down the ages. But even if I agree for sake of argument, it is the word of God. Even if it's, since the followers of that religion, they believe it to be the word of God, they should follow every letter, every word of the scripture. So if the Buddhists believe their scripture word of God, the Hindus believe their scripture to be the word of God, the Christians believe their scripture word of God, so all your scriptures are saying you have to follow the teachings of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So since you consider it to be the word of God, I say maybe it is, maybe it is not. Since you believe it to be the word of God, you have to follow your scriptures. So you have to believe in the last and final messenger. As I mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Who is this person? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Was there any religious person who has glorified Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, besides Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam?